right. Well, first off, I want to thank you guys all for joining us today. This is going to be so fun. It's definitely one of my favorite things that we do. Last time was a blast, and I'm looking forward to going over all of your charts together, too. Um, okay, now... To begin really quick, I would like to do just a quick introduction with names and then just a quick sentence or two of where you are in your astrological study. So I'm going to go down the line of actually the order that we're doing the charts. So um, Jen L, I'm going to start with you if you wouldn't mind. Hi, um, I'm Jen and I am coming off of a break from getting a certificate uh, from Kepler and ready to jump back into you know, reading charts and, and learning. So I've been on a two year hiatus, um, ready to get back into it. Very cool. I'm excited to have you here. And we're actually starting with you because uh, happy belated birthday. Thank you. Oh, Congratulations okay. on that certificate, too. That's awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Alyssa. Hey guys, um, I'm Alyssa. I'm from Michigan. Um, I've been studying astrology off and on for a long time, but um, just been super serious about it in the last few years or so. Um, taking some classes myself. And yeah, I just like. Uh, like sharing astrology with everybody and talking about it. Um, I host a meditation on Tuesday nights that's astrology based online, and that's a really fun way to share with people. Yeah, I love your meditations. It's so fun. Um, okay, Brenda R. I'm Brenda, and um, I'm new into this, but enjoying it, trying to learn as much as I can. And I just started my Saturn return. So mm. here, learn. Um, Liz. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm currently in Portland, Oregon. Today is really beautiful, sunny, and I'm excited about that. Uh, I've been studying astrology since 2017, and I've been learning from so many different types of teachers through books and online through Thomas. Um, currently, my focus is on evolutionary astrology and galactic astrology. And I feel like every day I just eat and breathe and sleep astrology. And I don't think it's going to be something that I'm ever done learning more things about because there's just so many layers to it. And I'm sure we're, we all kind of know that <laughs> uh, even at a beginner level, it's just kind of a journey that's going to keep going. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> Absolutely. Love that. Okay. Addie, am I saying your name correctly? I want to make sure before we continue. Um, let's see, I can't hear you. Yeah, we're not hearing you, unfortunately. If if you go down to the middle of the bottom down there, you'll see the there are some settings, I think. And if you just click the gear, that takes you to the um, to the audio and video settings. And yeah, if you just I'll let you mess with that. Um, yeah, we'll roll on. Brenda we'll B. Hi, everyone. Um, I am, I've always liked astrology. And in the last year, I uh, came across um, the Fun Astrology um, podcast. And so then um, that has encouraged me to learn more. So I'm taking the one-on-one -on -one course. So I would say I am in um, pre-K right now, learning astrology. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's funny. Okay, Jenny G. Is she? I don't even see her. Um. Okay, Tisha. Okay. I'm in Tennessee. Uh, I've been reading books for years, but this last January, I went ahead and signed up for Sea Forest Evolutionary Astrology School, and I love it. 
I've learned so much um, just in seven weeks. So I'm excited to actually be able to put in practice. For, for me, reading books, it was hard to figure out the method. And he really lays out a nice method. It's really nice. I love Stephen Forrest. That's awesome. Um, Great teacher. Yes. Um, okay. Addie, did Addie correctly? Is I yeah. saying that? Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, good. Okay. Um, it's I there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm in Houston, uh, Texas, and um, my astrology level is about intermediate. I've taken some courses to understand my chart. Um, so I'm familiar. I think I started studying it maybe 2015, something around, around there. So I'm, I'm familiar. Awesome. Well, wonderful to have you guys. Um, Would you do me a favor and say your name again? I want to make sure to get it right. I de. I Got de. it. Thank you. Kind of like de. I de. Good. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's... Just a quick disclaimer, this group session is for astrological information and educational purposes only. All comments are sole opinions of the participants and in no way construe medical or, physio or physiological advice. It should it only be taken as such. Um, and we just wanna go through the astrology for the start of this session. Thomas noticed a really cool kite with Jupiter leading um as well as i was looking at the fact that uh the south node is conjunct the the rising right now um to the to the same degree so really cool chart to be meeting together under so we'll actually see a bit of this chart as well because today we are going to be focusing on a topic called the consultation chart um, it is a practice that Robert Glasscock uses, and if anybody is taking the horary course, it's chapter nine, if anybody's already in it, but it's a wonderful technique. I actually use it myself as well. It's um, a really cool way to focus the consultation to what you do here, I'll, I'll move to the first one so we could kind of look at them. Um, here is Jen L's consultation chart. So what it is, is actually her natal planets are around this and it is set to my rising to my location and time zone. And what it does is it takes the natal planets and is a good culmination of where that person is right now. And this is a technique that actually Evangeline Adams um, first started doing and made popular. But it's it's a really cool just focus and it's a, um, a combination of horary and, and birth chart, but it's nice because you don't have to necessarily take the same considerations of judgment as you would in a regular horary. Uh, Thomas, is there anything else you would like to add? The way that this is constructed, just for clarity, because we did a little artwork on Canva here. Kristen was able to uh, simplify this, but you take the chart that we showed a minute ago, which is 7.30 p.m. Chicago. That's Kristen's time, and she's the leader of the group. So she's yeah. the, you know, the astrologer in charge, if you will. And so it's set to her time. And that's the inner wheel of a bi wheel chart. Then you put the natal chart over that current time chart, which is the time of this meeting. So that's the event. And then what Kristen did for simplicity, and Robert does this in his readings too, go in and wipe out the the um, current event, the time chart, the inner wheel, because you just read the outer wheel and you go, oh, this is a very familiar chart, but everything's in a different place. <laughs> because obviously what it's doing is it's just setting your natal planets to the time of this event. 
And that's why you can read it without any considerations for judgment in horary because it's an event chart and it, it works incredibly well. Yep, definitely. Um, yeah, it's a really cool technique. Um, okay, so we'll start with, with Jen's. Um, again, happy belated birthday uh, on the 4th, so just a, a couple days late. Um, so for the start, I really like to look at where the sun and moon are placed in the houses. That's a really good focus on what um, what we want to, to talk about and just where your focus is at the moment. Um, and by the way, Kristen, let's just mention too that she has your natal chart with the transits on the outer wheel. So just looking at your natal with the transits, if you want to go to that. We just wanted to show you this. I think you'll, as, as the evening goes on, you're going to get kind of turned on to this consultation chart but if you prefer to have us look at just your natal we have that too yes yep if there's any focus on transits that anybody wants to look at i do have that chart um, in the slides as well um okay so now i do know that you know being a a kepler certificate graduate you know the consultation between a client and an astrologer is actually shown by the seventh house and having your your son in the seventh and your moon in the sixth and um the moon being ruled by by mars in the tenth definitely shows you know some some good growth through this consultation which i love and you actually have some cool um transits as well i think offhand i know that you've got venus conjunct your jupiter right now which is your chart ruler i love that and then um uh i, I think it was mars which is the ruler of the sixth house is conjunct your or conjunct the um mc i think for the moment um but we'll we'll get to that in the the transit does anybody else uh notice anything from this chart when it comes to aspects or house placements i guess and just unmute your mic there whenever you want to talk yeah, the first thing that caught my eye which kind of goes back to the career astrology thing like you said is um you know, the ruler of this chart is Mars because we have Scorpio on the rising here. So, and we have Mars right up here in the 10th house. Um, also, if you want to keep talking about astrology, we have Uranus in the first house here. So, you know, planet of astrology right in the house of, of the being of the chart. So, um, yeah, I love that. I love that Mars 10th house placement. Yeah, absolutely. Now for the consultation chart, it is the same rising for everyone. So for this, uh, we'll be looking at Mars for everybody in this chart. Okay. Which I think is also kind of great because action, motivation, moving right, taking steps forward for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Anybody else notice any other um, aspects? Her um, Urania, I've been tracking that on my chart mm. now, is at nine, almost 10 degrees Pisces. In her natal, that's in the third. And here, I think it's in the fourth, right? Wouldn't that be that slide button keeps coming up and it's blocking the bottom of my screen. But let's see, we've got, oh, no, we've got a three degree ascendant. So it would be in the fifth house. But um, in the natal third, um, obviously communicating astrology, however you choose to do that through writing or through consultations or through podcast or YouTube channel or however you want to do it is there for you, for sure. And Pisces, so the spiritual aspect of it. 
hopefully a podcast. That's my goal anyway. That'd be great. Awesome. Good. Well, you've got the, you've got that. I, I, I've been interested in that because they say that a good placement of Urania, which is, if you were just looking at it, it's an asteroid, but it, it, it points in the sky to astronomy, or in other words, an interest in the stars, an interest in the sky, an interest in the study. So that from just a pure secular standpoint, and then when you talk about how might this show up for me related to astrology? Is Jupiter next to it? Well, you better be an astrologer. You know, it's like <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other, the last thing that I noticed too is the ruler of your sun is Venus in this chart. And uh, having Venus here in, in the eighth house definitely shows a want to transform the people around you that you're working with, which is a really beautiful way to, to work with astrology. Yeah, and it's sextiling that Mars up in um, the 10th house as well, too. So, yeah, yeah, nice connections all the way around. Did you guys, I was looking over at the other chart, did you talk about the part of fortune in the third? Uh, no, no. Well, there you go. Yeah. See, and that's where this, this is really cool, because here, here we are, Jen, with a group of astrologers and talking about, this moment in time and you're wanting to do some, you're coming out of hibernation from astrology again. And wow, look at that part of fortune right there in the third, again, that, that communicating and marry that back with that Urania point in the natal chart. That's the point I was getting at. Yeah. Do you give any um, weight to the degree that uh, falls that cusp of that first house in this consultation chart? I have learned from Robert Glasscock, you give high importance to any degree placement in the chart. <laughs> yeah. How is three significant? I thought that that meant that whatever this consultation chart is about, it's something that is just starting. You know, you've got your early, your middle, your late. Uh, that's the way I see it. I was just wondering if you all see it that way too. Um, that is very typical for horary practice that, you know, the first couple of degrees are something that's very early. Now for this, you know, it, it is going to be the same for everybody since we we started the, the consultation and it's more of an event. But what I do notice in that is that this rising is actually exactly trying your chart ruler um, as well as when it comes to like other timing things. I like to, to take the degree base and, you know, even like this moon only being three degrees from like Saturn in the 10th, like those kind of things. And, you know, having a, uh, a cardinal sign moon, you would look to the, the cardinals days that are here, the thing at the bottom, the chart over time stamps. So, and now having it be, it would be cadent for this. It's like we don't necessarily have a question like in horary, um, but it, with the two two houses that we take into account, the sixth house and the tenth house, I would say the the next three months it would be really really good for you moving forward in you know establishing yourself as a astrologer and putting yourself out there. Okay, so you were just, that's how you were using that chart, was yeah. the degree, the house, and cardinal mutable fixed. Okay, cool. Yeah, you. and you can use that timing technique, you know, you always have, so like in that, I have the moon moving to Saturn, 
and I like that um, Saturn because Saturn is the the structure, the longevity, the building, and you know the fact that it is in a cardinal sign. You would look to the the first um, row of of timing stamps, and and as Robert says, you know some of that timing can definitely be a little a little wishy washy depending on like what the actual topic is, but. I think that three months for establishing a solid practice is uh... Kristen froze there, so we'll dance. <laughs> we'll come in here and um, I was a little bit lost on the um saturn sun obviously that's the fourth tenth axis um was that because of doing astrology professionally is that a question for me or um i guess how did she come up with 410 there Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. We lost our slideshow. She'll be back in a second. I've got a backup of it. If we need to, I can throw it up. I've got it right here on my chart. I could put it up. Um, I think it was the moon that was ruled by Mars in the 10th. Maybe that's how she got there. And she being the sun, the representing the seventh house okay consultation chart okay i was going to say robert would absolutely have interpreted that three degrees the way you did though that this is exactly <laughs> you know you got your training you took a little breather and now you're at the beginning of this astrological journey that um absolutely yeah and maybe that three years every three years where you um maybe maybe some kind of refreshment or a new beginning every three years something new starts back up etc so she also has a grand trine and i noticed it was in the second sixth and um tenth house so that that's great <laughs> great for your great for money making okay yeah i don't my internet was lost there mercury retrograde right yeah <laughs> kristen we yeah. were wondering go back and so the the fourth tenth axis <clears throat> that has uh, saturn and well that's the sun how did you you were talking about the moon how did we get there um i was looking at the moon trine so moon in the sixth house uh trining saturn in the tenth okay Three and what were apart. what were the significance of those two planets um i was looking just at the fact that uh, it's in the sixth house for, um, for work. The ruler of the sixth house is in the 10th. Um, and the, um, Saturn being the planet of building and longevity and structure and the fact that the moon and Saturn were only three degrees. Okay. I think also you probably were talking about Saturn being the ruler of the fourth house. Yeah. 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 Saturn being the ruler of the third as well. Um, okay. Let's look at just this really quick. So yeah, I, I did notice Venus um, conjunct your Jupiter today, as well as the the transiting midheaven on your Mars right now. Um, some really cool, 
cool synastry with uh with the um beginning of the the consultation that's good to hear it's been a rough couple of years yeah i think uh you know coming out of covid um definitely definitely feels like a a jump start for for a lot of people you know a lot of a lot of rough things that can uh can now start to work themselves out well and i've had transiting uranus go through my um well i would say my sixth house but that's whole sign um and I, it's just been really unpredictable so i had mm. to just kind of let some things go just to make room yeah having it conjunct your son the past couple of years yeah definitely okay um anybody else notice anything on this chart before i move on I want to say something. There's someone uh, mowing my lawn right now, so I apologize <laughs> if there's any noise in the background. But um, the Chiron conjunction, the transiting Chiron with the Mercury in the fourth house, I feel like is worth putting a spotlight on just because Chiron moves slow and it's lining up with your mental body. So probably you're starting to verbalize a lot of these things that you've learned. and. Um, such as talking about your wounds, like you just came out and told us about what's going on with you as far as astrology and how you had to overcome kind of being resistant towards it. And now you're here talking to us. So I think that's reflected in the chart too. And we're kind of creating an intimate space here. So that can be reflective of the fourth house, fourth house as well. And I hope that you're sharing with your, um, your family members and things like that about your career change and stuff. I was going to mention that too, that wide orb opposition with the natal Uranus and Scorpio on the South note that that definitely looks uh, pretty poignant to me too. Definitely a lot of talking and a lot of purging for sure. Well, in the 11th house, though, that Uranus, and I feel like that's also like a big boost to that whole idea of like uh, getting out there with an astrology practice and then just, you know, getting involved in the community of, of astrology. Yeah, I, I, I've been doing things along the way within the last two years, but um, my main working life is getting a little bit more stabilized now so i can predict my schedule a little bit better um so that i can bring in this other thing that i want to do yeah awesome yeah and that uh hopefully that natal... do them both at the same time mm. yeah. yeah the natal opposition between your your son and and your honest definitely i feel like puts that in in focus i like to say that you know um, the sun's shining a light on it with that direct opposition. I know we need to roll on, but that vertex point, Kristen and I have been bouncing back and forth on that, is right on top of Venus in the six. That's probably something to explore around too. Yeah. Sounds like a turning point. <laughs> I was also looking at um, the nodes of the moon, both like transit wise and natally. Um, so Kristen, you already mentioned um, the conjunction between Jupiter and um, Venus earlier. Um, so that conjunction with where Venus is right now, um, it's squaring your natal nodes, but then it's sextiling where the node, where the North node currently is and then trying where the south node currently is. So it gives this feeling of like pulling away from 
the the natal node location um, and pulling towards this like future. But at the same time, though, that axis is going to switch here really soon. So when that switches, it's going to switch back into um, the axis where your natal nodes are. So it feels like, yeah, you said turning point. It feels like a like like a clearing, like a karma clearing type situation a little bit. Um, Venus, you know, Venus is going to make things work out better for you, and she's pulling you away from, you know, square. So this this separation, this scratchy um, aspect here, she's pulling you away from like what you came in with and towards where you should be going. But at the same time, you're coming right back around to that same axis. So you're going to have to probably clear that out at the same time, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Having Jupiter natally square your nodes and creating that that T square, um, you know, puts focus at that first and second house and and shows a lot of growth. Having the North Node in Libra shows growth through other people, but having it having that T square release in the first and second shows growth through yourself and through others. Is how I would read that. I I didn't even notice that. That's that's great. Thank you for that. You got the A team tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. All right. All right, Alyssa, you're next. So here is your consultation chart. Now you natally are a Scorpio rising. So we didn't really change much at all for you. No, nope, so we're nope. only three degrees <laughs> off. Sorry about that. We'll be more diligent okay. to pick the time better <laughs> next time. I love this time of night in the Eastern time zone because it's, yeah, it's my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so natally and in this chart we look to mars and uh having mars in the ninth house is a wonderful time that we're actually all getting together because ninth house is you know the house that is of teaching and of broadcasting your ideas and you know being in cancer is the sign of of caring and doing it together and i just love the the combination of the two Okay, the other thing that I noticed, having the, the sun in the seventh, again, shows a, a focus on relationships through, you know, these next couple months and having moon in the 11th, especially around community. Now, the, the sun is ruling the 10th house. And so I would take that the relationships that you're trying to build to be more wor work relationships than than anything. Um, let's see. Between you know, that's a great point, because that's right on par with that card that we drew when we did uh, Sunday night mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that's interesting that this chart pulled that out. What kind of new relationships? Of course, Alyssa has been with Kyle since they were in diapers, basically. <laughs> Not quite, but <laughs> a long time and she's young. But um, new relationships, maybe even around this meditation that you're doing on Tuesdays. And yeah. by the way, if everybody wasn't together when we mentioned that before, Alyssa does a great meditation on Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, and it's on um, Meditative Astrologer on Facebook, YouTube, and we also link to it or have a post about it on our Facebook group. So you can get to it a bunch of different ways through, you know, even through here. So um, is it around that or where where is it for you? 
Yeah, it's definitely, you know, within the networking. Um, the interesting change, you know, we mentioned that not much changes with this chart, but the interesting change is that the moon moves um, from the 12th to the 11th. So mm. dealing with groups and people, right? Um, so yeah, there's a there's a lot of really nice networking going on and um, meeting of relationships that I never really expected to happen. And in different avenues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. And, you know, building a community around astrology and the practice of meditation, you know, really shows that that's where your your heart is, especially having the moon in Libra, the sign of relationships, too. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um. So now for, for timing for you, what I would actually look at is the the sun being three degrees from the midheaven and in fixed signs, um, we look at, at months. So in in three months for, for you as well could be really big in in some of those relationships that you're building too. Wonderful. <laughs> I have a question. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Does that series that's kind of close to the ascendant, does that, um, Alyssa, does that mean anything to you? Um, you know, I can't say that it does because I, I'm not going to say that I know a whole lot about um, the asteroids and things like that. I think that's uh, Liz Grace's expertise there. So I can't, um, I don't really have much to comment on with that. I see it's in your, it's in your 12th house natally too, if this chart's not as different from your natal chart. Uh, yes, it would be. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, there might be like a little bit of a disassociation from Ceres just because it is in your 12th house mm -hmm. and she's the goddess of uh, agriculture and nutrition. Uh, also basically responsible for feeding us essentially, because when she goes into hiding, the whole earth suffers. So there might be like some sort of inner nurturer inside of you that you don't consciously um, tap into all the time, but it's there. <laughs> so, mm. Especially like with it in Libra, uh, you probably do nurture your relationships in some sort of way unconsciously. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting the way you explain that because um, like I said, typically my rising sign is zero degrees. So usually the moon is in the 12th as well. Interesting. So yeah, it, it you have like a, an emotional nurturing quality then to you. Yeah. Yeah, I would sense like a, like a natural sense of like responsibility for other people's well-being being like an underlying theme for you. Is that true? I worked as a CNA for 10 years in a nursing home. So sounds like you're describing my job perfectly. Oh my God, I don't do that anymore, but yeah, that's exactly what I did in yeah. nursing homes and rehab facilities. You know, wow. places where well, we're grateful to have people. you incarnate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to smile the way you describe that. Cause yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. There's a work piece here, so I'm not sure what that is, but whatever you're wanting to do or maybe a new income stream, tying that sun, as Kristen did, to the midheaven, very interesting, and with Jupiter right there and in Leo. So there's something that you want to put out. I've known that. I mean, when you came here, we kind of talked about that, and then I said, hey, we need to follow up on this. So um, do you know? Would you want to share, or is it developing and we just keep it where it is right now? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't keep it much of a secret that I'm just trying to develop a um, a spiritual practice that really has astrology as a big part of it that I can share with other people. Um, so I just said I worked as a CNA for 10 years. I no longer do. That job was very fulfilling in finding a way to help people. Um, and I need to get back to that in a way. So we're going to we're going to get back to that through through my spiritual practice that I've that is just a part of me and um, yeah, just going to keep learning and growing. So um, my goal is to switch out of my full-time work position that I'm in now and switch to 
something different. And I'm slightly open to what that different could be. Have you ever looked into like a uh, death doula work? Hmm. I feel um, like your chart looks like that seems like something you would be good at or something you would you be drawn to. Yeah, I've I've thought about it. I've definitely thought about it. Um, you know, working in the nursing homes, hospice situations where, um, you know, those are those are very special cases, and that's that's a privilege to, you know, Absolutely. help with. Yeah, could definitely use more of that with people with your specific skill sets for sure. Alyssa, you know Mary Ross in our group. I do. That's um, that's what she does, correct? Yeah, and she's your neighbor. Yeah, I'm going to have to talk with Mary again. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew when we met that there was something that was there, so we need to be in better, closer touch. Because this is saying you've got a new career, and it's going to be successful, and it's going to be big. And I yeah, felt that it's... I felt that as you know when we met that there's something mm -hmm. there. So this mm -hmm. just really confirms it. Wow. I yeah, Venus in the eighth house. I just that yeah, I love that. It's beautiful. I'm learning to love Venus in the eighth house. <laughs> and Scorpio rising too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with Thomas, too. Having that moon in the 11th for this chart definitely shows um, a big stretch to a, a community. And two, actually, you and Jen both have 18 degree um, Mercuries. So you also have Chiron. Mm -hmm. And back on that on that consultation chart, Uranus of astrology was in the third house. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right next to Neptune. Oh, man. This is, take a picture of this. We need to save this chart. <laughs> this is a big deal. I was kind of looking at that. Is that also, her, so that's her natal chart, in her natal chart, right? Yeah, that, only three degrees different. I, that, that kind of, especially in Capricorn, like that's a generational thing that only, you know, when we're looking at those conjunctions and especially those two, that's visionary and, and revolutionary at the same time. And when you look at Capricorn, I think about really responsible. I don't know if maybe I would think that you're more responsible than a lot of people your age or your peers. Um, but because it's in the third house, how could you teach others in your group with the challenges that are specific to your group? Um, raising families, you know, dealing with parents, uh, marriages, whatever. And how could you sort of be an influencer of people that people your age would look up to you. That's what that, like how I see that, especially in the third house. I <clears throat> don't know how to articulate this in uh, the best way probably, but Mercury being the natural third house ruler and it being in the sixth house and then having Venus in Gemini ruled by Mercury in the eighth house also seems to all kind of add up to the same type of thing we're talking about with this idea of like a, a career or a calling in some way of having um, a, an, uh, a role of communicating and facilitating some kind of work to do with transformation. And to me, that reads like, to me, like death doula is all I keep seeing in this chart. And I don't no, no, that's morbid to you, but for me, it's beautiful. And I think that that is something that probably is like calling out to you. At least that's what I see in this chart, personally. Yeah, I absolutely love that suggestion, honestly, because, um, yeah, I just love that. <laughs> okay. I'm, gonna I'm just not to belabor this because I know we got to go on, but. <laughs> What you had there was the node, you had the north node, and then Neptune, and then astrology right there in a line. I mean, you just, mm -hmm. 
Like if, if this was a bowling alley, boom, knock them right down, right? Boom, 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 boom. There's your purpose. Yeah, totally. And all those being ruled by Saturn in the fourth and um, Aquarius as well, something that you could do at home and even online on the computer, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, again, we've got same uh, same Mercury degree. So, same as Liz brought up with, with Jen's chart. You're also having, having that transit as well. Um, the part of Fortune is currently also on your chart ruler on Mars. And the, notice any transit? You got Mars transiting Mars coming, or yeah, it's hanging out around your north node or your south, right? Your south node. That's your yeah. south. I always get them a little confused for some reason. The little ball like things on the top makes me think of up, so I think north. <laughs> Anyways, mm -hmm. your south node. Um, so definitely feels like you're in the mix of taking more action or at least exploring uh, maybe some past life karma that you need to clear before you can really charge ahead. And it looks like the moon is activating your North node. So this is probably a time of maybe some deep reflections and things like that. Yeah. I was going to say on the, uh, it's interesting that your North node is right now conjoined the sun because in your birth chart, you've got uh, in the, the MC and Jupiter, I believe, and that's opposing Saturn and Uranus uh, and Uranus in the fourth. So sometimes when Saturn, I think is in a lower placement, it can cause a little bit of um, like a stoic, feel and and with you being a Scorpio rising and the sun opposing and then the north node there kind of makes me think maybe you know the more you emphasize that sun and and let it shine through that uh, ascendant a little bit more then I think that you will find great success you know and it's so interesting that uh, Pluto also is kind of in the, in the house of your uh, North Node also right now, which is definitely transformation. And you have Pluto in the first house, which sometimes can be some, some you get in your own way to some degree. So um, that's something to think about, maybe making some deep transformations as Pluto moves in the lower part of your chart. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. That's. Um... Yeah, thanks for that perspective. I needed that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great point. You know, having that it's a grand cross if we're going to do actual um, aspects. You know, between Jupiter to Saturn and then the Sun to the Ascendant. And yeah, I, that's a really good, really good point out, Tish. Tisha. Um, anybody else notice anything? Oh, and I do want to say one more thing, um, okay. because Mercury is trining. Let's see here. I, I, so Mercury is trining also uh, this stuff you have in the third house. And I think that's just a push to, um, you know, let that assist you. Let the, let let your words assist you. And you've got Chiron there, too. So there could be definitely some woundedness there that you're healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Pluto is also going to be retrograding onto uh, the Juno placement in your chart in the third house. So I remember we were talking about relationships in the consultation chart. And so I think with Juno representing sacred relationships, you're going to be definitely experiencing probably new relationships in the sense of third house and things like that and maybe reinventing like what these relationships mean to you or even 
taking some relationships presently in your life out of the equation so that you can be a little bit more of service to this new community that you're building. Yeah. I was actually curious um, because of all that third house um, activity, uh, is there something happening like around you, like immediately around you, like in your neighborhood or in your home or like in your immediate community that's like going on right now, that's kind of, I don't know, influencing you. I'm just curious. Um, um, definitely like my immediate environment is, uh, as far as like work and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so not necessarily community. Um, yeah. Um, definitely more, definitely on a, um, like a, like a mental environment level, okay. you know, a lot of things going on kind of, kind of there. Um, I know sometimes it's interesting because it can, it can take either form, you know, like it's either like a, like a mental shift or it can be like, you know, like someone bulldozed your house, you know, yeah. <laughs> her house can be a lot of things. Yeah, no, totally. Actually, I heard somebody, um, last week say, uh, like, it's the drunk drawer of houses. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that is kind of funny because that is so, yeah, not my phrase at all, but I heard it. I was like, that's yeah. <laughs> just kind of throw things there. Like um, it. yeah, I, I guess now that I keep thinking about it a little bit, um, I have a lot of, um, like close environment changes with my husband and my husband is a Capricorn rising. So that's taking another further jump. Um, you know, that you don't have, didn't have that information in front of you or anything like that. So, um, yeah, further you think into it. All right, thank you. Yeah, really great. All right, wonderful. Um, any last minute things before I move on? Okay. All right, Brenda R. Okay, so now for you, I noticed that the sun is sitting in the fifth um, and you've got the moon sitting in the, the third. So now they are in a, in a sextile in this. So it does show a connection between the two. But I think the, the combination of these two houses is a lot of, you know, how how you have fun and how you are spending your free time currently and you know what what you you know being we just talked about the third house being in your environment and how how you are connecting to those things right now um let's see. Now for you, you're actually also a Scorpio rising. So same with, um, with Alyssa, you know, we changed your, your chart a little bit, but not a ton, you know, we're, we're not 11 degrees off at, at, at your ascendant. So again, we look to, to Mars sitting in the, the sixth and being your, your natural ruler and the ruler of this chart shows, um, a focus on work and health and your daily routine right now too. Being conjunct both Mercury and, and Juno show a flow of ideas and especially from the partners and people around you too. Anybody else notice anything off the bat? I think the moon in the with a natal in Capricorn is wanting to stabilize emotions a lot. So when you have a really busy, active sixth house, be really aware of that and self worth with the moon being, or I guess it's in the third house. So just per perceptive of taking care of yourself and stabilizing your emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now with this chart as well, um, 
I look to the sun is ruling the the tenth house where the midheaven is sitting for you as well. So it's a lot of how you're you're showing up to the world right now too, and your title um, could be a big focus. Moon sitting in, or uh, Venus sitting in the fourth. A lot of, um, you know, love and growth and stuff around family right now, which is beautiful. And I see being in the the sign of Aquarius can show that you know having the the big community and stuff. I know that you guys just did a a group reading together, and you know that that definitely screams uh, Venus and Aquarius in the fourth house to me, which I love. I also noticed you're coming up on your second Saturn return, it's like. I was curious if you've noticed any of the vibrations of that at all lately. I have. Yeah. Is it, would you care to share? Um, I'm leaning into it. I'm just learning. And um, I'm, I'm, under, I'm learning that I can change I can, that there's a karmic debt and that I get to change the trajectory. Um, you feel empowered? I, I do. I do. I'm just coming out of um, being a leader in the organized religions. Wife, we're in the middle of a divorce and um, it's pretty intense, but um through astrology, I've learned how to take everything to be a teacher. And there's so there's no right or wrong anymore. Um, it's just really teaching and don't have to change anybody. And that everybody is on a chart. Everybody's on a chart. And so um, every day is one degree on this chart. So I just keep on seeing myself, you know, um, checking it off because next year I get to redo it again. But there, there's beautiful seasons in it and learning to lean into the retrogrades, no longer being the bull in the china shop, um, being a Scorpio rising. And yeah, I. Well, that's amazing. I think. Yeah, being able to lean into retrogrades definitely shows like there's nothing that uh, can replace experience because if you've gone through enough and you know what to expect, you kind of know how to like lever leverage them to your benefit. But I also noticed that well, Pluto is right on your part of fortune right now in your third house. So I feel like, I mean, people give Pluto a bad rap, but I think that that, can, that particular configuration could be a really big boom or the right kind of person. It sounds like you've really taken the bull by the horns in that regard. Mm -hmm. Good for you. <laughs> I just want to read the notes I wrote on here. I, I have ego serves the soul. Stand up for your spirituality. That was one of my notes. Um, and I also have with your with your nodal placement. So you gave something up in past years that the soul really needed. And I put probably intimate relationships based on looking at your chart. Um, and then I have the soul wants to stabilize your emotion. I also have strategize finding your tribe. And I think um, with your Pluto and that, that you're in a, that you need to find your tribe, that's going to be really important for you. And um, just to learn how to, you, you've got the Chiron with the sun and Saturn, and that's, that's a deep wound that's going to take some time to heal. So I love that you say that because um, I've been asking highest source to bring me my tribe. Oh. that I don't have to look for them that that and you guys are so much a tribe for me I feel like I go to church every week I no longer miss organized religion because I can suit up show up here and and then I get to shine my light even brighter that makes me so happy to hear I feel the same way <laughs> that's so that. awesome Brenda mm -hmm. thank you wow 
Yeah. Yeah, having your um, Ascendant conjunct that Neptune just shows how spiritual you are and having the the neptune square your your midheaven definitely shows some some growth and some changes through this lifetime in in that as well yeah okay well, let's i'm gonna move on to your transiting chart we could just kind of because we we're already kind of touching on the the pluto on your um Part of fortune and uh some of the other transits as well but yeah i i think uh what jenny pointed out having having the pluto there it does get a bad rap but it it definitely can bring wonderful wonderful things through change and you know that part of part of fortune being the the culmination of your sun moon and rising um and the fact that it'll pass over again will show lot, lots of changes over these next couple of years. We could talk about the Saturn return briefly. Who was in Steve's class? I can't remember. Who's who's doing Steve Forrest's program? Uh, Tisha. Tisha. Is that Tisha? Awesome. Great. Well, no wonder then your contributions are amazing and you, you're coming from good stock. Steve portrays the Saturn returns in the Book of Earth from the Elements series and brilliantly our life is divided into thirds the first saturn return moves us from our youth into those productive adult years and then as we move into the second saturn return 58 59 i love how he says it you guys should know because i say it on the podcast quite a bit either you are going to be a grumpy old toot for the rest of your life. He's, I think he might say fart, but I'm not sure. <laughs> or, or you're going to be, or you're going to be a really cool old person. And that is so, oh, wow. If you can just embrace that. So those of you who are in your thirties, forties and fifties, which I think is most of this group, you are laying the bricks mm -hmm. for 58 mm -hmm. and 59. Yes. And then you get, as Brenda, you were saying, then you get to choose when you go through that portal. If you've done the work and Saturn and Pluto are sitting there saying, you got anything else we need to do over here? Yes. No, I don't have anything. You got anything? No, I think we're good. Okay, then we can lay the foundation. Yes. Remember, I love David Cochran. Uh, he, he does... Um, the, uh, oh, I'm going to not remember the name of it, but vibrational astrology. And in mm -hmm. vibrational astrology, each planet only has one archetype symbolism. Mm -hmm. And Saturn is legacy. Mm -hmm. yes. Think about you're laying the legacy for your next yes. life when you yes. cross that bridge. Yes. So now if you're given the years, you have 30 more years yes. till 88 to prepare what that next life is going to be, what the afterlife is going to be, what you're going to leave behind here. Yes. I mean, it's, it's almost as productive as the prior 30. Yes. So then when you get to 88, as he says, now you're starting to wrap up and you are, you're thinking about the next beyond. And as Jenny was saying, it's a beautiful thought if you make it that long, that you really start to think about gracefully transitioning and not being a burden to your family and maybe even doing like Yogananda and giving a speech one night and then just going, you know, it's like I'm out um, where you could even call your own, your soul, you, where you, your physical body could even have some control over your soul's departure. Yes. And these are all, it's as much a part of life as being born. We love to hold little babies and this is just as much a part, right? So the Saturn return is this portal and I just would so encourage all of you who are in your in those 30s, 40s, 50s years to keep in mind that everything you do every day is moving yes. towards that moment. And then when you get up here, Brenda's age, my age, that these are the years that we are going to leave something behind. What's it going to be? Some beautiful symbolism. 
just beautiful. And a lot of people fear it. Well, they fear it because they've lived a screwed up life. And Saturn and Pluto are the karmic blues brothers, and they will come get you. Just don't be in that position. You don't have to do anything to worry about. That's all. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think in astrology, I've learned that um, my mantra has been, I want to leave a legacy of change. Mm -hmm. And learning astrology and getting into the podcasts and doing the live videos with you guys, the live, I've learned that I lean into the retrogrades to clean up. Mm -hmm. I, I call that now a time of going back and redigging the earth of karma so that my soil is good for the new seeds that are being laid for the next generations because I want to be a baton that's handed on. In the time that I have studied astrology, a quote that has come up over and over and over again, and for good reason, is um, one from Socrates, the unexamined life is not one for mm -hmm. And astrology is really a tool for just mm -hmm. examining Mm -hmm. and be reflective and so yes. if you can, yeah use that that kind of reflection and actually harness it for change and like personal mm -hmm. growth and you are doing exactly what you should be doing however that looks or however that is you know whatever it looks like if, as long as you're doing that then you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. absolutely i mean i think that you know what you what you just touched on and and just through change and the fact that this coming Saturn return is in the sign of Pisces. I look to, to Jupiter as the, the ancient ruler and being in the eighth in Gemini, I feel like shows a, a duality and almost a molding together mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. spiritual and, and religion and, you know, just kind of being able to, to mix the two into what you need it to be. She has a T square also with that Jupiter in the yeah. um yeah in pluto uranus and the saturn chiron sun chiron, so yeah. yeah that would definitely be something to look for your roots with the um with the pluto uranus and um public expression in the fifth house so. and also one more thing as a, do you try to do a lot of stuff on your own do you try do you feel like you have to handle everything yourself i'm, I'm getting to where i don't I think that's that's probably something you really need to focus on too yeah. for better relationships. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah, and then as you come out of your solar return, you'll be coming right, rolling right into your Jupiter return. Kristen, as Kristen just mentioned, um, you know, Jupiter is the ruler of the Sun here. It's in your eighth house. You're talking about this change and transformation that you're trying to make. So, fifth house, eighth house, huge transformation. Um, around the things that you enjoy, the hobbies and the things that you do for, you know, that, that you enjoy around your family and your kids. Um, you know, Neptune in that first house, somebody already mentioned spirituality there, but there's also, um, there's also that like dissolving aspect of Neptune, right? Where it kind of breaks things apart and pulls so that, um, dissolves it, disintegrates it a little bit. So, um, yeah, definitely probably some unwrapping of things to build up something something different. Also, Uranus is gonna be coming towards our North Node over the years. So speaking of change and wanting to create a legacy of change, I think it's very beautiful that like later in your life, you're having this transit with the world of uh, Uranus and Taurus. So there's kind of like a divine timing with you kind of coming into this second Saturn return and being able to integrate your life as it has been and your past lives and things like that and use all that to actually like impact the world with something mm -hmm. revolutionary. So I have a question. How, um, how do you relate to groups versus individuals does one play more importance in your life than another um i do better on a one-to-one -one, but i'm learning to get comfortable in groups 
I'm learning to put myself back out there. Yeah, at some point it's going to be interesting because Pluto is going to go over your natal Venus. So um, maybe not in 24, maybe it's 25 or 26. So if one-on-one -on -one relating uh, is something important, um, I wonder what that would be. Yeah, I love that everybody is picking up on change after change and all these different timing techniques or different um, times in the timeline and then, you know, in these different ways. And that's what you're saying you want. So it's coming mm -hmm. your way. Yeah, I feel like my tree has <laughs> literally been turned upside down. Up in Barrow, Alaska, there was someone had never seen a tree. And so they actually, when one came in, they planted it upside down and so that's me i am uh, i am planted upside down but as the storm came and hit austin um i literally went out and taken photography and as above so below it's not any differently so um yeah that's my life turned upside down but i'm okay i'm okay i was just gonna say i you know from from all of that, then you have a fifth house stellium. And I, I wonder if it looks to me, the way it reads to me is that you get a lot of gratification from helping others, from, from pleasing others, from, from supporting other people. And I think that that um, leads into maybe your, your, un, your appeal to astrology or attraction to astrology, because it's a way to kind of fundamentally help people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that your 11th house opposition to. Yeah, yeah. I want people to have the proper tools in their tool belt and be able to use them properly. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point, too, with half of that. Well, at least uh, Mercury and Mars being ruled by that sixth house of um, service as well in that in that fifth. So I could definitely see with especially with Mars and, and Mercury conjunct um, joy of serving others to, mm -hmm. to bring them to better spots. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful, guys. Thanks. Um, all right, Lizzie, you're up. So for you, you've got the the sun in the in the first house and the moon in the second, and so this definitely shows like a lot of um, change and and focus on yourself right now and just your your worth and what you bring to the table, which is really really beautiful. I love that for you and and just you know how you fit in to the the people around you. Um, having uh, Mars in the in the ninth, which is the the ruler of this chart too, he shows a lot of focus and in, in teaching others as as well as you know broadcasting your teaching to to other people too. So for you, you've actually you have a huge change with your ascendant being in the in the seventh, uh, normal, um, Gemini rising. So this is probably way different than what you're normally seeing your birth chart, huh? Yeah. Everything's below the horizon too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's different looking. Um, I'm tuning into the I'm like learning right now this consultation chart. So I'm kind of observing. Um, but now that y'all are on my chart, I feel like I can kind of like understand it more. But I do think it's interesting, like the third house, uh, Uranus and Neptune. And then my Venus is in the third house, which is honestly like completely different than what I'm used to because I also have an eighth house Venus. Um, so to see it in the third house is kind of uh, painting a different picture in my mind <laughs> of what I'm used to in myself. Yeah. Totally. But I think the, the combination of having those four 
placements in in the third is beautiful for your podcast and stuff too you know having uranus neptune venus and Pallas there too you know being the the asteroid of knowledge is is really really great for because you're you're teaching a lot of people about the asteroids which i love you know having having that that asteroid of knowledge there in the third Yeah, I see a lot of growth and a lot of change with this chart. Um, you know, the the moon, you know, the moon has recently separated from from the sun, so it's um, moving away from it and moving towards something different. We have Pluto in the first house um, here, so lots of transformation and change within within the self. Um, what are, we, what are we two degrees away from Mercury there? So yeah, probably within the physical self and probably within your mind as well. Um, but yeah, this chart looks very, um, it looks nice because it looks like there's lots of fun things coming in the future. It looks like there's a lot more to come than like what's behind you, that type of, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, for you, I noticed too, in this, we've got the rising eight degrees from the midheaven. So with that also being angular, you're looking at like eight months to, you know, really, really kind of um, showing up for, for people too, having that midheaven in Aquarius and, you know, all of the astrology work that you're doing right now within that could be a really, really great time for you. It also kind of feels like it's asking me to focus more on my uh, my home environment because now my mid heavens in my fourth house. So there's probably some sort of need for me to focus on developing what's around me and like within my home space. And I think within, I just moved into a new art studio space. So developing that realm and the community there, I think will help assist over like you're saying the next eight months of really refining this astrological message, this teaching that I'm sharing with whoever is around me, whether they're physically here or over the internet. Um, I think just starting intimately in my home, uh, I think it's a good thing for me. And I've been kind of tuning into that need to uh, really refine those spaces and things like that before I move forward with anything um, too drastically or just try to, it's kind of asking me to slow down, I think. Yeah. Um, not necessarily with creating and teaching, but not rushing to get the message out necessarily. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see that with Saturn being there, you know, having a, a stability with that. And, and I agree with you, maybe not slow down. But at the same time, you know, Saturn is at home there, it's it's comfortable. And, you know, having them only be two degrees apart too, again, would show me two months for, for that timing technique um, that, you know, maybe just getting comfortable in, in your space in the new art studio there as well. And maybe these next two months, you know, creating, um, you know, a, a spot that feels stable for you in that area. Yeah, I think Saturn's just asking you to set up a nice little studio for your podcast. Get a nice microphone and all that. Thomas can probably tell you what to get. <laughs> well, what's lucky about the space that I moved into is there's already a professional recording studio in there. And yesterday I just had a meeting with the person who runs it. So I'm going to start recording in there. So um, I feel like I'm I'm working with this current consultation chart and what it's reflecting and you are obeying Saturn yeah. <laughs> you could possibly do. Yeah. 
See, everybody should have a recording studio in their home or office. <laughs> I highly endorse it. <laughs> that could be dangerous for some of us. <laughs> Okay. Um, anybody else want to pull anything out for the consult chart? Okay, I will move on to the transits. Happy Mars return. You are right there. Been feeling the power. Yeah. <laughs> Feel the burn. It's been a good Mars return. I've been enjoying the uh, cancer aspect of the Mars and everyone around me is kind of emotionally explosive. And I feel like because I've been growing up with the Mars and cancer, I'm like just navigating the seas of everyone else's emotions and I'm being pretty mellow. <laughs> I'm a natural born firefighter, which as someone with like all fire placements, we need you. <laughs> Yeah, and that Mars is trying Neptune up in the 10th too. So, you know, spirituality through your, um, that you put out into the world through your job, through your career. Yeah, totally plays right into all of it. Absolutely. And that uh, part of fortune sitting on your Juno right now too, and also in cancer and partnerships through caring for others. Yeah, focus on your business with Venus moving through there. It's only like a couple of three weeks, so quick one. Yeah, absolutely. Venus moving through the second is a wonderful time for that. How you does know, uh, Mercury Pluto work out um, for you in the six? How does that transpire for you? So I, in the equal house system, we don't see this, but in the, I use a Coke house system where the houses aren't in nice little order. So since I have an early degree ascendant to, uh, in Gemini, it actually makes it so I have uh, a double house placement. So basically I have an extra of a uh, Gemini and Sagittarius and those signs eat up my sixth house. So it's kind of like this silly thing for me where I feel like I'm learning how this Mercury and Pluto is affecting me in my life because I've actually feel pretty bubbly towards my disposition and nice childhood, good friends, things like that. I've definitely have my down times and things that have affected me negatively. But I think there's a part of me that's like learning to access my sixth house and uh, Pluto and Mercury in that way of service and how I'm like sharing with other people. And then with the fact that my sixth house is not accessible traditionally, then my 12th house is not accessible traditionally. And so spirituality has always been kind of this thing I've never completely like identified with especially when I was growing up. So I think there's kind of like this mystery within my Pluto and Mercury placements that are kind of coming out as I'm maturing and I'm finding that I am starting to identify spiritually. I mean, obviously I have ever since 2017 when I started studying astrology more intimately. And so it's just kind of unraveling. And I think part of the Pluto Mercury conjunct my son is I've been having uh, like, maybe intuitive thoughts that I disregard all, my whole life. And so it's just kind of me coming into that um, experience more consciously. Uh, I also have the ability to basically to re relate with like any type of walk of life out there. I've found myself in a lot of interesting social situations and things like that. And I seem to kind of have a lot of friends from different places all over. And I think that could be a reflection of the Pluto Mercury uh, conjunction. Uh, it being in my sixth house with work, like I said, it's kind of something that's evolving. Now I feel more in tune with that. Whereas earlier in life, I identified with being a fashion designer and things like that. 
So um, now that I'm growing older and kind of tuning into the more subtle things of life and kind of stepping away from visual arts and things like that, even though I really enjoy it, I'm allowing myself to express like another side that I never really revealed for most of my life. Yeah. You mentioned you were a fashion designer. I'm thinking of like changing things with tools. So I don't know what kind of like fashion design, like if you actually made the clothes yourself or if you just, or not just, but if you like sketch out and design. But, I mean, um, I definitely make the clothes myself. I use my hands a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you yeah. said that, I was kind of like, bing, that's pro that could partially be, you know, one, one aspect of it. Um, yeah. I also just imagined you probably have, um, probably, maybe you're not aware of it, but you may have a fairly like intense presence when you're where you are. I've had people say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad or thing. That I, I come across as I'm like, I'm always busy. I think, I think generationally for uh, Pluto and Scorpio, there is a real need to unflinchingly look at really intense things. And so you fit that. When I looked at your chart, I, I really, I wrote, you were on a relationship quest and I just wanted to hang out with you because you would be the kind of person that could on a whim put together probably the best day ever <laughs> for just going out and having fun, you know, and, and, whoever you were with, you would relate to really well. And um, so I think you're going to just help tons of people just because you're created to do that. She came to one of the get togethers we had last year here in North Carolina, and she is a totally cool chick. I can tell you, she's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing I can't ever look at a chart like this without emphasizing and connecting with the transformation theme in this chart. And I mean, it just shows up over and over. So uh, looking at the eighth house and Venus and Uranus astrology. And Neptune, I mean, it's, and you did, you found your path about five years ago. And interesting too, that that's a multiple of 15 Uranus astrology. It just, this chart is so emphasizing everything about transformation. And a lot of people get shied away from that. I think it's amazing. You came here to turn over so many new leaves and pages. And I got, when I finally realized that in my own chart and started embracing that, then it was almost like this shift that not only am I to continue transforming myself, but also then all the work and everything is about transformation. So it's a real easy thing to just kind of slide into. And, and then you're making this very powerful impact on the world. So it's incredible. And now you're learning that in your early 30s, and you can run that out for a lot of years. I also wanted to say, because as somebody who has a lot of Sagittarius placements, I have full stellium in Sagittarius ninth house, like your ability to be able to interact and intermingle with all different walks of life is definitely a powerful strength that will carry you very far in whatever it is you decide to do, because that's just a strength that very few people have. And if you have it, I mean, you have all kinds of resources at your disposal and that's super powerful. So definitely use that to your advantage as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you were talking about your sixth house normally being intercepted. And, um, you know, I look at the, the ruler of Mercury and Pluto being Mars in the, in the second. And, you know, it shows a, a lot of self-development through that too. And, you know, a lot what Thomas was saying with the heavy eighth house and also op opposing that Mars to definitely a, a lot of transformation in your, in your chart. Definitely. 
Yeah, I'm lucky I got the Gemini rising and Sagittarius sun to kind of <laughs> trick everyone into thinking I'm not living in the underworld or anything. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I have a pretty like peachy disposition for all the transformation. <laughs> and Capricorn is the archetype of the elder. So, you know, you'll be able to give that back a hundredfold. Absolutely. All right, wonderful. Okay, remind me one more time. How do I pronounce your name? Aidhi? Aide. I'm sorry, I didn't catch up. Aide. 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 Okay, wonderful. Um, so now for you, you are actually also a Scorpio ascendant. We had quite a few in this group. Um, which is not surprising since we're moving out of uh, the Scorpio um, eclipse season. But anyway, so for you, you actually have this chart ruler and your normal um, in the in the eleventh, which I love to see being here in a community all together because I feel like this is a a great way to kind of help build up, you know, people that you can kind of talk astrology with and having your your son conjunct jupiter in the ninth is a lot to focusing your your education and you know having your your moon in the 11th as well um and then you know having a um a conjunction i mean it's out of sign but both being in the 11th with with mars too you know, have you been kind of looking for a community? Have you been kind of involved in in other? Because having the moon also in Libra, you know, sign of relationships. Have you been involved in people that are close to you right now? No, not the opposite. Oh, really? Been, okay, so yes. looking for for a community. Looking, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's kind of seeing if it's astrology or if it's shamanism mm. or if it's uh, something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I feel like uh, astrology and shamanism, I mean, having the uh, sun there in the, in the ninth in Cancer conjunct that Jupiter, very, very spiritual. And I mean, astrology too, you, you've got... Mm -hmm. Uranus conjunct your your ascendant and you know the fact that they are also trining each other too I think both would be beautiful rep representations for you where do you live I live in Houston okay Texas Whatever it is that you decide to do, just make sure you are absolutely speaking your truth because that Mercury and Midheaven conjunction up there in Leo, um, yeah, your your voice really just needs to shine out in some way. And with it being Mercury, um, I wonder if maybe it could be kind of multifaceted, if it could be a couple different angles. You know, maybe you don't, you mentioned um, astrology and shamanism, maybe maybe you can take two focuses and either blend them together or um, excel in both of them. I've thought about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That conjunction and well with um, Saturn and, and Venus also there being ruled by that, that sun in, in cancer. Yeah. Definitely it's right back shows. to that ninth house you were talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. shows like a, a caring for people and no matter which one you end up picking, you know, shows a, a growth of helping people build knowledge and, and care for themselves and their, their spiritual practices. Yeah. That's just kind of riffing off of what you just said. I think of like, so I'm looking at Pluto in the 12th right now in Libra, and I'm thinking of like pulling somehow helping pull people out of um, out of a dark place or out of, you know, navigating through something that they'd have a hard time navigating through without without help. Also, with the Lilith conjunction 
to the sun that would also emphasize what Alyssa just said as far as kind of pulling people out of dark places. And with like Lilith and Cancer, I feel like you can have a, like I'm getting a sense of like really strong female warrior archetype almost that's like standing up for the underdog, but doing it in like a very like fierce, noble way. Um, so there's like a, you're like a, you're fighting a good fight and that you're able to be strong, I think for others when they can't be, or maybe you, because you yourself have gone through uh, experiences of rejection and are able to empathize with people on a level that they probably don't have with many others. So you can pull them out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. I can, I can resonate with that. <laughs> Is there a timing aspect in this chart? I'm not familiar with this type of chart, so I really don't know how to rate it. But is there a timing? Because I feel like I, like there's like a change or like, I just, I don't know what way to go. Like I almost feel like a crossroads. <laughs> and I don't even know if this would answer that or not. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, let's see. Um, I would have the Ascendant move to the Sun, with that being at Midheaven. Um, so what, we're at 12, 12 months? Yeah. I'd say, I mean, you're only at like a three degree change between the Ascendant to the Midheaven which I could see three months being a time of, you know, kind of starting this moving, but the actual ascendant to the midheaven ruler, the sun is 12 degrees in that trine there. So by a year is really when you are, I guess, cooking and kind of in that, that energy is what I would I would see. So what I what I wrote down when I saw this chart was when it comes to career, there's kind of a time and money aspect. You're kind of maybe a time and mo time is money, money is time kind of person. And I, I see this as sort of between a rock and a hard place, but not to be like negative but I see you trying to decide which way to go. And I don't know if your decision is based on time and money or how much you have to learn for whichever way you wanna go. Whether you go, was it astrology or shamanism? Because it that Jupiter and sun make me think that you're in a really high learning focus right now. And Saturn's in the 10th and Mars is in the, or the 11th. So does that resonate at all? It does. Yes, it does. I am taking a course in, in shamanism and I'll be done by the end of the year. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I've used astrology as a personal tool like I mentioned earlier, for myself so I can read my chart in you know, a little bit. In the books I've read, few courses I've taken. So yeah, I'm on that, like I said, in between trying to make the switch or choose. Or maybe I don't have to. I was gonna say, why not both? Oh, there's why not both? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, that's an option. Mm -hmm. Right. Why do I have to choose? Like who tells me to choose though? So, yeah. yeah. Just you, that's your idea. <laughs> you can <choose> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree. Anytime that you can incorporate astrology into a new practice um, can definitely bring really cool insights and, you know, the um, incorporating shamanism. It's really interesting that you're going to finish at the, the end of the year. So I could see then that that trine between them, at, um, the sun and the ascendant a year from now would really be when you are are in in that full energy of of knowing that that path
Um, anybody have anything else for the consult chart before I move on to transits? I have quite a bit on the transit chart. So um, starting with, you talk about astrology. Um, astrology is represented by Uranus. And Uranus in your natal chart is in the first house at seven degrees Scorpio. Uh, is it showing 12? I might have gotten a bad. Let's see. Check my. Looks like I'm. No, I did it right. Um, but anyway, uh, Urania is at 10 degrees Scorpio. So the so that marker, if you will, of astrology is sitting right next to the planet that rules astrology in the first house of you. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I didn't know that. Really? Cool. Well, that's it's it's something that a lot of people don't like. I've just been playing with this. But when you have a significant Urania placement and you're thinking about doing astrology, this mm -hmm. chart says oh yes by all means oh. however you do it right however you however you incorporate it but that's there okay all right and then i just looked at the outers because where you are in your timeline of earth of your transit through earth um several things coming up so you are going to have a couple of things in about the late 20s, so 2029, 20, about six years out, Pluto will be trine its natal position. Um, you'll have the Saturn. Um, Saturn I marked as being square to your natal mm -hmm. Saturn. Is that right? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah I think I think yeah, I think it is because it just went through the opposition. Yeah, you just went through the opposition. So mm -hmm. you've got another, yeah, two, four, six years. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Saturn square coming up. Chiron return will be in a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and then applying, you, Jupiter is in, in applying to its return, which will be in another about two years. So you have this kind of short-term window and then about a five, six-year window where a lot of these significant intersection points are going to take place. So one of the things that you could do is study the information. Gosh, I need to do a product on this. So I need to do something to put in the fun astrology website to do this of um, how these outer planet aspects affect these sections of our life, especially through our 40s and 50s because there are some really significant periods coming up of intersections that you can work with the energies. So we don't have time here tonight, obviously, to go through that, but that's a side study that would be very worth your time anticipating these things coming up. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, um, you're definitely going to have some cool Saturn aspects trining the the planets in the ninth. So this is this time through your your education too that, um, especially as it transits through the the fifth house, that can really help kind of boost you in your your place within you know, the, the spirituality of, you know, transforming others to, you know, Saturn being structure and how you're necessarily going to navigate those, those relationships in aiding people to. I'm tuning into Venus transiting over your vertex in the eighth house, kind of opening a new door into this new realm of shamanism and spirituality and mm -hmm. astrology. And as Venus transits further, it's gonna enter into your ninth and that's gonna make a pretty sweet shrine, it looks like with your Uranus. So 
I think Venus is going to be asking you to really like just fall in love with what you're learning and all these new ideas and kind of having a relaxed Venusian flow with it, not racing to get through all the information, just digesting it and being inspired and allowing it to, I guess, manifest in real time what you're learning um, with Uranus there. So, yeah. Does uh, shamanism have like, specialty topics like I, I don't know much about it but do, would you focus on a specific type of people or group to help them heal in a specific way or a specific modality no it, it would be the other way there's a lot of different branches of shamanism so my, my focus would be a, a very specific one but the people to assist or to help that's that's not specific Do you have anything that you're drawn to? Like a specific? Uh, I would take it back to, I don't remember who said it. Um, I've had some really, you know, dark uh, moments in the past in my life. And I would help it back to pull people out of that based on what I've been through. So specific to, you know, trauma, childhood trauma, things like that. I'm seeing like women and safety, mm -hmm. you know, maybe from um, violence and, and helping women who have had that kind of trauma. I definitely mm -hmm. see that. Yeah, that I think that's sense. Sense. actually, that's a thought that's been like in my mind to find a way to volunteer somewhere, help or kind of get involved in a group to help um a women's shelter or, or something i've thought about it i just this year kind of flipped it's like last year i could say it was white and this black or vice versa so these first three five months of the year have been like kind of very 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 different you yeah. live in, in houston Gemini. sorry yeah, go ahead i think, I think Gemini uh -huh, yes good. i'm in houston yes i got a note on that but you can go ahead whoever spoke Oh, um, I, I was saying, I think Jen makes a really good point, too, of um, helping women, I think, with having that Chiron conjunct that descendant only two degrees apart and obviously opposed your um, your ascendant can really show healing of, the, of other people through what you've gone through. And being in Taurus, you know, we look to, to Venus as that ruler and being in uh, in Leo can kind of help show you having that, the people like moving into their forms of leadership and conjunct that Saturn and in their own stability and being able to, to work through that too. Um, I, I read um, that differently, but yeah. I was actually looking at Libra in the 11th house, the moon safety and being a Venus ruled moon mm. um, conjunct. And then with that Mars there, that's where I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe that cutting or that violent, you know, that there was some relationship between the two. Mm. Yeah. I was kind of on the same path thinking of like that transiting Saturn in the fourth house being like a protective sort of Saturn in the sign of where Venus is exalted, uh, also playing a part in that similar kind of story. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up is, uh, so Brenda R, I know it's from our reading that you wanted to do some sort of like female outreach in your future. So I, I think it's worth kind of saying, um, you both are in Texas and so, there's potential for mm -hmm. you to maybe teaming up or at least uh, encouraging one another to explore that avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be great. I'm open for that. Very Gemini rising of you. 
with, with Steve Force, he he does a primal triad. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but it's the sun, the moon, and the ascendant. And for yours, I had the healer with the heart of a peace faker wearing the mask of the great philosopher. So I mm. think that that's how I think of you. <laughs> that's what your chart says. That's beautiful. Just yeah. watch out for codependency. I it think is. there's definitely some signs also mm -hmm. there that you have to be really careful emotionally that you don't overdo for other people and become reliant on other people, especially yep. in groups. So, and I kind of saw that Mars that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think that can be a struggle with the sun Jupiter conjunction in, in cancer too, which is, I'm, I also have that placement. So I understand it can be mm -hmm. um, a manifest manifestation of that as well. Yep. Um, all right, wonderful. Anybody have any last uh, last thoughts? Okay. All right, Brenda B. Um, okay, so now for you, you've got a sun in the fourth, which shows a lot of focus on security and, you know, what, you know, what your basis are. So home, family, um, you know, it could be job and stuff too, just because that's how you, we, you know, we provide for, for our family and uh and especially with with venus there too and and being the the money making making sign it is a a positive a positive aspect um for that in this chart and i love that you've got jupiter also conjunct that um that third third house cusp there moving into the fourth so definitely a a super lucky time for you in any transitions that you're making in the in the future. Um, we look to Mars again for this this chart, and being in the the third can show a lot of just your initial environment being really important right now. And let's see, ruler of that in um in the eighth mars in capricorn we look to to saturn in the eighth and you know that can definitely again show a, an initiation for for change right now too you do have the moon conjunct uranus in the 12th so wonderful time for studying astrology you only got two two degrees off between them, so really close close conjunction, and especially learning it through relationships being in in Libra, whether that is um, you know through friends and um, maybe even studying the the placements of people around you as well. Mm. Okay, natally, we've got a Jupiter ascendant, um, Jupiter ruled ascendant with, with a Sagittarius rising too, and having that, that 29 degrees in Capricorn, we've got some, some Pluto action happening in the, that transit chart too. So again, another, another major thing for transformation through this too. Now I know you are kind of looking at career change. Um, let's 
Let's see. I'm looking at Mars being the ruler of your sixth house. And it's squaring your, or um, building to a square to your, your midheaven currently, too. How many, how many months of school do you have left before, when do you get out? Um, not that I'm counting, but 19 days. <laughs> <laughs> how many hours, how many minutes? <laughs> 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 yes, uh, we'll be done June. I think June first is my this kids go last, the last okay. day of school. Yeah. So it's definitely coming to an end, but yeah, a lot of change definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, all about who's around me, uh, who I allow in my space, and who. Um, I put borders on, so that's on point. Are you moving at all? Um, no, not yet. Uh, there's no plans on it. Um, but there's, I guess, I am considering moving um, jobs, like locations, um, to a different school. So if you think about it that way. That's in the a possibility. And what school? Like, is it you're going to school? Is 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 that what it is? Uh, actually, both. So I'm um, a teacher, and, and I was looking to change um career fields i don't know if i wanted to stay at the school where i was at or i was going to change altogether um in staying in this career means that i do need to take more classes um which has also made me consider altogether just changing careers and getting my master's degree in something completely different like in mental health I was going to say it looks like there's a very um, serious financial consideration to whatever you're looking at for sure. Well, and you have, so everything you just talked about was third house. Mars in Capricorn is in exaltation, but Jupiter is in fall. So that's kind of interesting. What are your other options? Um, career wise, um, it's either stay, um, get my certificate as a teacher, um, or, um, go work for another company in, um, in mental health to kind of set me up to go into, um, a mental health degree, uh, because there's a lot of sponsoring ships and stuff like that, um, or just stay where I'm at um, and working part-time and teaching religion for my church. That's, that's where you are now? I am teaching um, at both at my church and at a public school. Okay. Interesting. So, so Mars ruling the sixth is in exaltation in that third house of all the learning. And to me, that's where the focus of this change would apply. Would you guys not agree? Mm -hmm. Do you, anybody see it differently? So, you know, if it, if you stopped right there and Jupiter was up in the 10th house and I'd say, go for it. You know? But with Jupiter there, it's almost like, hmm, okay, where would that tension or where would that pull show up in this scenario, possibly? What does your heart want to do? 
Um, make everybody happy. Work from home. <laughs> uh, counsel people and make them feel better <laughs> about themselves in life. Okay, so that so this boils down to basically several more years of education versus staying where you are. Well, really, uh, for either career, right, I need to go back to school. So it's a matter of taking four classes um, to um, get my permanent teaching certificate or going to and doing a two year court, you know, um, program to get my master's degree. Um, so regardless of where I do, there's school involved. It's just which route will better serve me at the end is the big question. When I look at your chart and I see your Mercury in the sixth house of Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter, which is there, right? Um, I, to me, it seems like you get, you're happy. Are you happy teaching a uh, school right now? Like where you, I think you said at your church, is that what you said? Um, I love teaching. So regardless of what it is, um, I love it. So I love teaching at my church. Um, I love teaching sixth graders. Um, but the both environments are completely different. Um, one is, um, you know, a lot more, it's a, a, a different mentality at the public schools versus at the church um, kind of thing. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's kind of different, but I like, um, I, I, I think I was born a teacher and I've always been a teacher. Uh, so regardless of where I end up, I feel like I'm always end up going to be some sort of teacher passing on knowledge or something like that. Absolutely agree with that. Uh, is there any way you can continue doing what you're doing now and do that two-year program while you're also teaching? Uh, getting my master's degree, you mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have actually considered that too. Uh, taking a different position, teaching position, where it would give me more room to study at a different school that would require me moving to a different school. Oh, I see, okay. Is that a very big inconvenience or would that not be a huge shift for you on your day to day? Um, I don't think it would really, I'm at a cross point. So I think regardless of where I go, it all, I just need to commit and, and make it happen. I would still, the thing that really jumps out at me is that second, eighth house axis. And I feel like there would be some stress financially. I don't know if you'd have to take out loans or go into debt, whichever option, or if there's another option that exists where maybe you work for a company that pays for your school. Um, and maybe it's not even related to what you want to do, but they would pay for it. Because I just, to me, that's, um, when I look at this, I see the stress between Mercury, what you want to do in the fifth house, but financially Saturn's there in the eighth house in a double bodied sign in Mercury's sign. So I just, you know, caution with whatever you decide to do. Here, Melissa is offering to chat with you, Brenda. Uh, looks like she's been down this path. So you know how to connect with her. She's easy to find. Absolutely. In our little group. All right. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thanks, Melissa. Appreciate that a bunch. <laughs> you guys need to connect. <laughs> she's all over it. <laughs> I do want to yeah, say that's that. The other Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. 
No, no. I was just going to say that that is one of the things that um, is why I haven't completely devoted to one thing or other is because, um, yeah, there's a big difference in going for a master's versus taking four college classes. Um, so that financial, there's a difference financially here. Um, and and so, yeah, that, that's something that I keep going back and forth and I'm just wondering, well, which one will work out the best for me at the end? Kristen, can we move on to her natal? Because I think there are some clues in there maybe we should consider. She just had her Chiron return, for one. But look at that second house as we've been talking about this, and also Saturn in the third. I'm also seeing like Jupiter and Aries in the sixth house. I don't know. To me, yeah. that says different masters, but that's what it says. And on your part of fortune, or a part, sorry, the two fifth house, my bad. Well, and the fifth house has this connection with teaching and learning. Saturn in the third. I, I know there's this debate. Where is education? Where is lower education in the chart? Is it in the third or is it in the fifth? Robert is very emphatic that it's in the fifth. I think there's a strong case also for the third, especially because of the third and ninth axis. So however you draw that up, that's not anything to create friends or enemies over, but you have really good placements in both. In other words, if you do this work, Saturn says, if you do this work, you put in this time, that's not very fun to do, but you do it then you've got something that you will use for the rest of your life. And you can use it from home. You can use it from an airplane. You can use it from the other side of the world. You know, you can It's just now once you have it, you own it. It will be with you forever. And Jupiter is saying that in this area surrounding education, you have Jupiter, the North Node. There's your future. Chiron just coming off that return slipped over there in the fifth house to say, new way of being so yeah <laughs> i i would agree and there's a little bit of like a kind of a mutual reception there with your saturn and, and jupiter placements because well jupiter is exalted in pisces no sorry not, not exalted but a ruler of pisces and then you have saturn who's exalted in aries i don't know to me there's like a conversation happening and i think i agree with thomas where like you could kind of do either way and it's really up to you like what feels right but i think you'll be successful either way you know, a big piece of this, too, is to follow your heart. Yeah. Go where your intuition is leading you, not what a bunch of people on a Wednesday night are telling you or what a chart is telling you. Go from find this and then let the chart guide you from there. Does that make sense? I am a firm Oh, absolutely. Yes, Good. no. And so I have, you know, um, that gut feeling and... Um, you guys here and Robert Glasscock have confirmed that that is what um, I need to be doing, right? Because I came in here tonight not expecting this conversation. <laughs> so it's uh, obviously something that needed to be brought up. So thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate it. And I just want to add to you, you've got Mars chart. in your first house and the sign of Sagittarius. You got flux galore and your your north node is right there. I think whatever you determine to do, you're going to succeed at. A lot, a lot of that first placement says that. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm on the side of like Jupiter higher education. I'm always kind of supporting people and like encouraging them to do like always go the highest you can go. Whatever you can you can go there, go there. You know, if you feel right, do it. Right. Up to you. That's a big decision for sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think the Jupiter definitely, and having that be your chart ruler, definitely shows um, a great teacher. And having your midheaven ruler be Venus in the third and the sign of community shows a, um, you know, a, a teacher for, for not just one, but for many. And maybe even a position of teaching online that could that. keep you yeah. at home at some point in the future. All of the above. You guys are right there on it. Let's say this another way. The ninth house is about higher education, ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter is in the fifth house of, let's say, the actual teaching, the actual, actual education. And Saturn is sitting there in the third house of also the learning. To say that asking the question, if I were to continue my education and if I were to go to the nth degree, like Jenny said, to get the most that I could get, would that be successful? This chart is screaming yes. Yay! <laughs> All right, wonderful. And let's move on to Jenny. Jenny, I missed you in the introduction. So if you want to like uh, give me a quick thing on where you are in your astrological studies too before we start, that would be great. Uh, I have been studying astrology since I was about eight or nine years old. My grandmother, who I've only met once, gave me a book for my birthday, and I hadn't met her up to that point, and it was an astrology book, and I got obsessed immediately. Um, so I've been just basically, a, I don't know, call it a hobbyist, but uh, studying astrology to some degree for most of my life. And only recently have I decided that, well, I should stop fighting it and just go with it because really the only thing that I ever feel like qualified to do is astrology. And so I've decided to commit to that as a career path. Um, thanks to Thomas, this podcast definitely gave me that extra oomph that I needed to like come out to my friends and family and say, hey, I'm an astrologer, deal with it. And um, I've, I've had a very uh, positive experience since then, thankfully. And people have been very supportive. And the ones who were not supportive, well, they're gone. So who cares? Uh, and I'm very, very happy where I am. and very happy to be here with all you. And uh, this this whole conversation is just delightful. This is like the best way I could think to spend a Wednesday night. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> I love that. And your chart definitely shows it, that you are here to to change people. I mean, you got mars rising to your ascendant right now you know i mean that's a a great thing as a as a self-starter um it's it's a wonderful thing in this chart to show that you're you're motivated and i love to see it especially conjunct that that pluto motivated to change people having your your son in the second shows that you know you're on the path of, of gaining the self-worth you deserve and moon in the 10th, you know, show, show everybody, especially the, to those two training each other. Y'all want to be, yeah, I was going to say, you all want to be jealous of a chart here a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. yeah. Because throw in Jupiter in the sixth house there. Yeah. And the trine. Exactly. She's got a big trine with Jupiter and the moon and then all of that up there to the tight Saturn sun. I guess you could even throw Uranus in there. Sure. Why not? I mean, the, Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the biggest, um, question mark for me has always been that Mars Pluto conjunction because like what do you do with that I mean my nail chart's in my eighth house and so that's you know a big of a it's a beast but I think that I've, I've figured it out a little bit and I think that it really applies in this situation like it's it's meant to transform other people and figuring out how to wield that has been the, the challenge I think yeah absolutely no. I mean you said it yourself that Pluto gets a bad rap and you know, I mean, being a, a natal 
Aries rising, you know, does put that in your eighth. And the eighth house is other people's energy too, not even just their money. You know, money is energy and it's, it's transforming other people, motivated to transform other people's energy. And astrology is a beautiful way to do that. Looking at this chart, I feel like a strong sense of embodiment coming off of it with all the second house action. And then like we're seeing the first house having the Mars and Pluto, something that you felt kind of difficult to integrate and relate to. But now it's here presently in the first house where it's out on the forefront. So it's kind of a reflection of like where you are right now, being able to embrace that side of you that you couldn't really identify with or know how to navigate so that's really beautiful you're right on the money 100 percent. and those are your chart rulers so they're right there with you and they're right there with you ready to do whatever you want to do and you have the chart where you can do whatever you want to do too i think so i've been told <laughs> it's very unique it's neat to see Yeah, you definitely have the chart to be jealous of, for sure. Oh, <laughs> shucks. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's and... better than what that lady told me at a group reading in Denver. She goes, <laughs> oh, this chart just makes me dizzy. <laughs> I mean, that's what I see when I look at my chart, so I understand that. <laughs> um, for timing-wise, I look at mars to your ascendant and um you're at about seven eight degrees difference between the two and in fixed angular that would be months so seven eight months from now could could definitely be big for you in in pushing you forward through through any um changes that you're making through through your career and stuff as well Um, anybody have anything for the console chart before I move on to transits? Are you looking at a, I mean, this is just screaming second house money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally. What have you got planned or thoughts or anything there? I mean, this is like a capitalize on a kind of chart. It, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, but I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow y'all's mind because I swear to God, astrology is... It amazes me every single day. So I, in the last five months, started seeing somebody and uh, he's Taurus rising with Venus in the first house. He's an accountant and an investor. <laughs> and that is opposite my eighth house, which was where my Mars Pluto conjunction is. And um, he is a very, very supportive human being. And uh, he pretty much believes in me like, implicitly and i don't know why but uh there's that and um i've just and, and just like within a few weeks of meeting him i had decided to launch this um personal like a, this, being a professional astrologer like a needle chart reader like that was like a, a very big choice that i made within weeks of meeting him so like there was this overlap and um i am aries rising with jupiter in the first house so i've had this jupiter uh return recently so all of this is happening at the same time. And um, so, yeah, I mean, like big moves are happening right now, but it's really just a matter of me building the confidence enough to really launch it because I have the resources. I have the support. I have, I think, more or less um, an amount of education that I feel comfortable enough in, in proclaiming myself as a professional astrologer. Like that's a really big step for me. But um so that's, that's what's going on with me. Like that's um, where I'm at. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, having all those uh, planets answer to your, your natal Jupiter as well in the, in the sixth, in this chart, um, you know, shows a lot of, a lot of support in your, your daily routine and in your own, work um as well not even just what he's helping you build like you you can help help do it yourself as well very self-motivated 
I think also the moon uh, with the Leo placement, it, it begs to be seen. It begs, it's begging you to, it emotionally needs. And, you know, that some, we look at attention so negatively, but I think that your, your moon needs attention and you deserve it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's Taurus rising, but his son is an Aries. And so it trines my moon. And, yeah. Well, that's 10th house. I think that's public. I think that's, you know, maybe stepping out on the stage. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, let's move on to your transit chart. I ran across something today that was interesting. Jenny, you might want to take a note on this. It was setups for successful suitability between two people. <laughs> Benefics in the same sign or trying to one of your luminaries. The lot of fortune in the same sign the ascendant in the same sign. And then it was saying that malefics in the same sign as one of your luminaries can be problematic. Attraction is possible, but it creates disagreements, breakups, or other things. So those are a few things you might want to check. Sorry, what was that? Malefics in the, what was it? Malefics in the same sign as one of your luminaries. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. That doesn't occur. I will, on our first date, I did his chart. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great chart. He's the Ven one. Venus and Capricorn I also seems like you might want like the, the masterpiece relationship and that, you know, it's worth waiting for. So I would think it'd be good to trust your instincts, you know, there, because I would say that's it. I mean, that placement seems like something you've thought about. Like the great work of a relationship is not something you would take lightly. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm a very long term relationship yeah. monogamous person. His Venus trines my Venus, which is I, that's never happened. <laughs> so you said you're starting to study astrology uh, seriously? Is that? Uh, well, I've always studied astrology, but I've just recently decided to become professional. Or like, yeah. What kind of astrology? Like traditional, modern, Hellenistic. I love that his Venus trines your Venus, especially since your descendant is Libra. That's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Midheaven, Saturn ruled, and in the ninth, um, definitely gives me the impression of teacher, too spiritual teacher. Um, anybody else have anything that they're noticing? Anytime you get tired of this chart, just, you know, send it right on over. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. Have you ever encountered somebody that has said, wow, you're, you're pushing me too hard? Oh, I mean, if you want to, <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time someone called me intense, I'd be a millionaire. Uh, so yeah, more or less, yes. <laughs> I was going to say in astrology, I think you would really attract a certain kind of client that person that that maybe needs to be pushed because you can definitely do it you've got a very strong mm -hmm. presence i like to think of myself as a natural born cheerleader and i yeah. have been told that i am very good at that people who want to be motivated who are in a funk uh need that extra jolt i it definitely provide and like the people that that are attracted to me, definitely. I think that's a piece of it. That's definitely part of like my dynamic, my my contribution in my relationship, my ability to get people to see their value and go after whatever it is that they want. 
Yeah, and I would encourage you, I know you said you're studying Hellenistic, which is really traditional, but I would also be interested if you would ever discover something that's maybe not the norm, because I feel like you can straddle both of those with that ninth house. You can maintain what's traditional, but then also there's kind of this like unconventional part to your learning experience. And I, I don't know what that would be, if it would be modern or if it would be something other kind of technique that would be unconventional that would help supplement that real stable Hellenistic study. I don't know. I maybe definitely think you're onto something. I've, I've, I've been very curious about harmonics. Like that's really where mm -hmm. I want to go, but I feel like I, I want to feel more comfortable and more solid in my basics, my foundations before I went that far. But uh, yeah, definitely agree with you. It's interesting that you're a Sagittarius sun and then you have the Jupiter in your first house because that would make you kind of think, oh, this person's big energy, a little gregarious all over the place, but it's just from your presentation here, but also looking at your chart, you have like a very per a professional atmosphere to you. And with the um, South Node being in the sixth house, I think it's in your comfort zone to put on more of a cut and dry face and be in routine and do more traditional jobs and things like that. So it's nice to hear that you're coming out of that and claiming astrology is something that you want to present to the world and that you're professional at. Because with that north node in the 12th house, uh, it's really wanting you to be more of this spiritual teacher navigating the ethers instead of being locked in earth and whatnot. And then you have the sun conjunct Saturn. So yeah, I think your comfort zone really is this safety net of routine and putting off some sort of front of like this, I'm a professional. But behind all that is like this fun Sagittarius energy and then the very, the North Node trying to push you to keep exploring further and let that show to the world more. And then you have um, Neptune transiting, getting to be near your North Node in the 12th house. So I feel like you're drawing in all that energy right now with what we've been saying and what you've said about calling in a different career path and all that. Yeah. I mean, you're definitely right on the money because I mean, I, I work in publishing, obviously, because the night palestellium, what else would I be doing? Uh, yeah, like, and yeah, I mean, I've been doing editing for like the last 10 years, and it's only been very recently that I was just like, oh, yeah, North Node Pisces, duh. <laughs> yeah, Liz makes a really good point with having that, that Neptune come into a conjunction with that, that North Node mm -hmm. and just building a, a spiritual practice. And, um, yeah, I think it's an interesting point, too, that Jen made um, with the intensity, but your chart ruler being that that Scorpio Mars in the in the eighth, you know, exalted. But what um, that what you guys were talking about made me think that, you know, being somebody's cheerleader to have them gain their independence might be you know, what you're kind of calling in to some of those people, just because I look at that, that North node being ruled by that Jupiter and Aries. And I think that you could be really good at helping people um, stand on their own two feet. Tisha, did you write anything down for the steep forest sun, moon ascendant? <laughs> I did. And, and, I'll, and I want to say something else on, on the notes, too. I wrote you were the original gypsy with the heart of a queen and the mask of a pioneer. Um, and also, I, I just had to go to my notes because I'm only like on this third week of nodal studies. But I do want to read you what it said about yours. Um, so basically, the, the sixth house, twelfth house is the servant and in past lives, you have served and served and served and served. And it says, God owes you, owes you, owes this person something. Um, then it says uh, that you must, you must receive something. So you, you're here to receive something. And then it says, you just have to get out of your own way. Uh, don't complicate things. You need to claim it. So that's, and I think I wrote, um, let's see here. 
breaking out of your routine. So if anything makes you moody, it's not for you. So when you start studying astrology stuff, if it's something you're not totally loving, just skip to something else until you find, I think, what you're looking for. But yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting to, <laughs> I hope I, I mean, I'd love to, I'll, if you have a page or whatever, I'd like to see what, what you do because I think it'll be amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Anybody have any any last thoughts? All right, let's move on to the last one, Tisha. All right, not a not a Scorpio rising chart, but a Scorpio sun. You have really actually have your sun conjunct uh, adjunct this ascendant here in the in the twelfth. So I read that as. Um, a lot of how you, you know, subconsciously relate to, to yourself in this consultation and, uh, and just kind of building on that, especially because your, your moon is also sitting here, but in, in Libra, in the sign of relationships and having Uranus sit right between them. I mean, it's a, a beautiful time for an astrology consultation and i mean i have loved all of your tidbits through this i think that um you know your your schooling through stephen forrest is he me he's such a great teacher and um yeah. i am really i'm really happy for you and excited that you're here yeah and today was really i was very nervous because uh, this is really the first time i've been able to speak in about it and to verbalize it. And I was really nervous. So yeah. And you guys were a great group to do it with. I appreciate it. Well, and good old Urania <laughs> in her chart. Well, her natal chart is sitting right on her ascendant at hmm. the top of the 10th house. So you tell Steve that you're going to take over the empire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in, Aqu in Aquarius then too, right? No, it's in Scorpio. Uh, yeah. Oh, in Scorpio? In her, in her oh, natal. Oh, okay. Now, in her in natal. Yeah, it's in Scorpio at 19 degrees, Scorpio. Cool. Love that. Um, okay, so for this, we also look at, at Mars for the the ruler of this chart. And sitting here in your, in your sixth house of of work and your daily routine and all of that. But I think uh, the fact that, you know, you're only sitting two degrees from this descendant too shows that, that transition from, you know, what you're learning to actually being able to, you know, relate it to, to other people. Could that have to do, I'd like, I've been, I, I recently moved, I've been here where I'm at about a year. I'm not really feeling completely at home. Um, is there any way you can, does that, I don't know much about these type of charts, but is there any kind of, can you help um, in any way with that? So I like, no, because that's, you know, with the Mars at the Taurus, I wasn't sure. Uh, could that indicate another move possibly? Move like your location, like Physical, home? Physical, yeah. So let's see, I would look to fourth house for that. And in Aquarius, we want to look to Saturn. Um, let's see. And you've got moon square Saturn there. I mean, I definitely say it could be a possibility. You're considering it? Well, I haven't, I haven't been very comfortable here. I mean, honestly, so that, that moon square Saturn says a lot. I mean, it's gotten better, but, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a difficult move for me. So, yeah. The moon's also squaring your ascendant pretty much like right on the nose. So I feel like what you're expressing, yeah. considering that the sentence landing in the fourth house is kind of reflected in this consultation chart right now <laughs> yeah you're probably feeling not emotionally tapped into the 
place that you're in. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that Finally. makes a lot of sense in the in the yeah, and in that house placement too. Yeah. Yeah, with the um with Saturn being in the ninth, being the ruler of that Jupiter in the fourth, it gives me kind of that feeling like it seems like home is like kind of a long ways away or where home should be or is or whatever. So um I don't think I don't think a move would necessarily be a bad thing. If you do, I think you would. It would be, you know, like a journey. It's not necessarily just like the next town over or something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Having a Saturn ruled by that Moon in that twelfth, I could definitely see that. That same thing that Alyssa touched on as well is, um, you know, feeling a little bit of a disconnect. Okay. Actually, I almost wonder about um, moving back somewhere just because i'm looking at um saturn in the south node mm. um, yeah i don't know i don't know if that resonates with you at all or mm. or maybe like missing maybe missing a missing something somewhere. well i'm a, I'm a night block an hour from my kids which you would think it was 10 hours the way they don't want to come see me but you know but i mean yeah it's it's yeah that could be it that could be it so <clears throat> or um you know uh south node um, looking at like past lives and things like that. Maybe, maybe mm. look at like some astrocartography lines and see where certain things line up. And I thought um, about that. You know, see where, yeah, see where the energies lie for you. And okay. so, is there some kind of work that is calling to you that you want to be closer to physically? Do what? Say that again. Is there some kind of work that you want to do, like if it's volunteer or anything like that, that you want to be closer to that would prompt you to move? No, no, no. And honestly, I mean, you know, I, um, no, no, that's not the case. I don't, matter of fact, I kind of enjoyed the distance. If you want to know the truth, I, I, I personally have enjoyed some, some distances, you know, from, because my South, my South node falls in the fifth house. So there's, you know, been a lot of that, um, polarity of caring for others and that kind of thing. So I, I have, separated myself a little bit from that, which has been nice. Maybe I'm just not, um, I think what Liz, were you, did you say I just wasn't quite there with it yet with my ascendant in the fourth, which. Well, it feels like it's picking up on the emotional tension that you're having as yeah. it, it scoring your ascendant. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a neat, I, I like that. Well, thank you all. Yeah. I'm going to throw, a, throw okay. a wrench in here on this, like, with everything that everybody said, and that was great interpretations. And when she's talking about, should I move? What's going on with where I'm living? It doesn't quite feel right. But yet your training in astrology, where are you now? If you don't mind telling us what, what, where are you geographically? Um, I'm like an hour north of Knoxville. Okay. All right. Well, you're just on the other side of the mountain over there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So Jupiter is right at the degree mark of the fourth house. So is the part of fortune. Where are planets the strongest? Right on the cusps, right? Yeah. And then if you were to ask a horary question of this chart, and this is, you know, Robert teaches this, and Evangeline Adams did too, that you can use the horary techniques on this chart. So you could ask the question, and I presume the question would be phrased, should I move? Or you could say, should I stay here? How would you phrase it? Should I stay here? Because I love the actual house. I mean, I, the, the night I bought, uh, when I first moved in this house, the eclipse last May rised in my front window. And then the oh, wow. one last fall was in, out my back window. I mean, I feel like it's, but I had some rough, I had some really rough patches in between. So I would say, how should I stay here? So the question is a fourth house question, Saturn and Sun, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. So, um, Saturn and the Sun are trying. So it would trying, be yes. So the answer would be yes. Okay. Thank you. 
I see this more as maybe not about the moving, but about your routine being disrupted. Well, that, that could be true too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you have to let go of anything when you moved? Like, I'm talking maybe physical things, not just the kids, but um, if, if not, I would say maybe that would be because it's in your nature, I think, to really be good at that. Um, maybe it just requires a good old purge and a new routine. <laughs> and I have been purging and trying to develop a new routine. But yeah, yeah. change is not always easy for me. So yeah, in that a Mars and that fixed sign that that's change is hard. Yes, uh, it's hard as is, but especially um, a move will do that. You're not you don't know where your grocery store is, where your, you know, your, your route to get to anywhere just yes. yet. Yes. So true. that's uh, true. Thank you, Jen. That's, that's really valid actually. Yeah. Now that I'm Perfect. seeing clearly, I'm kind of realizing the ascendant is Aquarius and then your moon is Libra. So they're trining. I have Mercury Gatorade is affecting me. So I think with what we're saying, as far as the tension, it might be this, um, your emotions are learning to be like more integrated with where you are. So like picking up on like routines and things like that, learning how to process because currently it's in your 12th house. So it's kind of something that you're not feeling quite like connected to right now. Cause maybe you're still figuring out how to integrate those sorts of things to where you are right now. Uh, that, Rain's more true now that I can see that clearly. Um, yeah, that's that's yeah. nice too. Yeah, thank you guys so much. That was really, really fun to hear and helpful, <laughs> very helpful. Mm. All right, anybody have anything for the consultation before I move to transits? Okay. All right, there we are. Mm. Yeah, actually, natally with uh, your IC in Taurus and being ruled by the Sagittarius um, Venus in the 11th definitely shows importance of of community and being in a new spot could definitely make you feel um, a little more uneasy of staying where you are, I'm sure. I'm, I'm not really that great at like uh, timing and things like that and charts, but it kind of feels like to me that the chart is calling for for a shift in like physical location in some way or another, but maybe it's not something that you know yet, or maybe there's just some piece of there's some information that you just don't have quite yet that, that would prompt you to do something like that. But it does kind of seem like if something should cross your path or come into your life that would inspire you to relocate, maybe you should consider that. That's kind of how I see it. Okay. When do you finish with school um, with Steve? I just started. So it'll be, uh, I'll finish my 100 series in October, but then there's actually 400, there's four different series. Oh, okay. So I'll be Are certified you... after the second one. So it'll be about a year and a half, I guess. Okay. I was curious if it was going to line up with your, since you've got the nodes passing over your Mars sun opposition well and i use a different chart structure and for me it falls in my second house and that's uh, that's been a lot of um i mean i i i've kind of felt a lot of that so mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I was just looking at you. You're going to have uh, 
Venus on your on your Saturn right now too and so um and in Cancer that that could be a really great time to kind of bring some hominess to uh to your structures Looking at your chart, it makes me feel like you're kind of always on some sort of deep quest or like always searching for truths and things like that. Uh, almost like you're always looking behind the curtain, picking up the rug and things like that. I mean, my Mercury and Scorpio, I, I definitely like to dig, dig information, so. I wonder when, though, like, is there, do you feel like, at what point have you, like, learned enough where you can share what you've acquired with others and things like that? Do you second guess yourself a lot? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of my nodal stuff was definitely um, action of self-worth, you know, just being scared to put myself out there kind of thing. So tonight's been really great for me. This has been been really helpful just to be able to verbalize what I've learned. Um it's been really positive experience for me. Yeah. You have a palace, the asteroid of knowledge and Mercury conjunct your mid heaven. I mean, I feel like you definitely would add a lot of knowledge to any, any conversation or any route that you end up um, going down. You know, you could teach a lot of people, a lot of great things. And Pluto's right on top of your part of fortune right now. So a lot of energy towards what could what brings you joy and how you share that with other people in the twelfth house. So here you are. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's astrology yeah. for sure. Yeah, I do love it. Yeah, I, I was also going to say because I I also have Chiron in the third house, and you have a Chiron return right now. So I was wondering if that has something to do with with what you're experiencing right now, as far as like finding your voice and feeling more confident in in being more um direct or more empowered with your words as far oh 100 and physically too because i think my whole thing with my house is i had some actual physical i was physically scared um and and so i kind of had to find like my my warrior <laughs> my inner warrior had to i mean in a physical and mental and all kinds of ways um, so yeah, that, and it's been rough. It's been really rough. Yeah. But it, I'm glad we're getting there. It's been a, it's been a, a good rough, I guess. Good. Good. I mean, that's kind of like Aries in its best, like a good rough. <laughs> You're right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Chiron and Aries, a, a growth to independence. Um, yeah. And Brenda, I know that I went through a horrible divorce situation. You were talking about that. And, and so I, I can relate to that because that was a lot of mine too. I think previously, I don't know, Thomas, you, I know you've spoken a lot about the Cairo return. I don't know when it really, you know, what the orb is for starting, but I mean, I think my mind's been going on for several years too. So. Yeah. What's Chiron's orb is like seven years or something. It's pretty, I don't remember how long it is. Um, well, Chiron's orbit is irregular. Like it doesn't spend an equal amount in each sign. So, um, I know that it does spend quite a bit of time in Aries, but mm. I do not know the breakdown of each sign offhand. I, I'm pretty sure it spends a lot of time in Cancer too. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a strange orbit. Um. Like, am I going to live long enough to have to deal with mine? Is really what I'm getting at. <laughs> uh, 50 years. 50 years for a Chiron return. Whew. All right. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to make it to mine. So we'll see. Good Lord. Mine was eons ago. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Anybody have any uh, any last minute things for for Tisha on her transits? Mm, 
Okay, well, that was uh, that was the last of it. So let me. Oh. Kristen, I think we were crazy to think that we could uh, have this group of people together for an hour and a half. That just was <laughs> not going to happen. We'll have well, to get yeah, a little yeah. smarter about this after this. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. When you said an hour and a half, I was like, well, we'll see. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I actually have to go. Um, but it was really fun to spend this like almost three hours with everyone. And I really appreciate everyone's insights. And I feel like I learned a lot. So thank you. And yeah, I thank you, Liz. Glad you were here. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, Thanks you for your contributions. Again, yeah, I really enjoyed listening to what you've had to say. Thank you. Yeah. I enjoyed everyone's words too. I love learning astrology. It's so great. <laughs> By the way, this will be, uh, let's see, this will be available on YouTube for the replay. It will also be in the Facebook group, but probably a little bit easier to find on YouTube. So right there to grab if you want to go back to over any of it. Nice. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to thank everyone. You. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Thomas. Kristen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was so great.